Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Grecia Cabrera, and today I have the honor of hosting Jonathan Garvey. He's the owner of Pancho's Blanket. Uh, that is a store that is located at the crossroads in the Bauer building. I strongly recommend you check it out, especially on uh, the first Fridays. It's a fun time. Um, uh, Jonathan, please tell us about your store. So Pancho's Blanket started in October last year at the store at the bower we did start the business in general probably almost three years ago and we make artisanal handmade garments we design different shirts um, hoodies jackets wool coats a lot of our stuff is is really for heavy winters and um yeah we have a community kitchen that it helps it's helped provide over sixty thousand meals for in the community of tlaxcala where most of our artisans are from anyways so, um, yeah, everything we do is really special, actually, I think. So <clears throat> what makes your products a little bit different than everybody else's here in Kansas City? Well, there's a few different things, right? So we design and make everything from scratch. We don't buy T-shirts and then put our logo on it. You'll actually see some of our shirts don't even have our logo on it. They have not even a size on it because they're straight from the warehouse house of somebody in Mexico. They stitch it up together and they sent it here. That's how artisanal a lot of our stuff is, where we struggle to even get the tags because we have the tags made as well, separately. And um, so there's that aspect of it, that it's not, all of it's made by us. And then some of our coats, they're made with foot pedal looms that are over 100 years old. And the way that we make them, this includes our blankets, this includes our jackets, like the charro jacket and the, the OG jacket. Uh, we make them on looms, 125 years old, with the method that they were using 500 years ago when That's the Spaniards amazing. came to Mexico and, and uh, colonized. So we use that method. So what moment in your life conceived this idea? Me and my brother, we decided to start designing these clothes with artisans when COVID started because we, we had to figure something out. And uh, they started to design with us alongside of us. We started to think of new materials to use, different cuts, and also the imagery. I have a really good friend who's an amazing photographer in Mexico, and he helped me get the... Um, get a lot of the photography started like this picture in the back in our background he took that he took most of our iconic pictures so um we're like yo if we know how to sell this the right way we make it the right way and we sell it the right way then this is going to be a good business nice so you have some in pretty incredible uh products you're helping and giving back to the community uh through your business um so tell me a little bit about your personal life and how your journey led to all of this. My personal life and how my journey led to all of this, like this Pancho's Blanket mm -hmm. or... Uh, uh, well, not just Pancho's Blanket, but also your care for giving back. Giving back has always, always been a part of, um, I don't know, just purpose and being generous. I believe in the principle that no one ever becomes poor by being generous. And I don't know, anytime there's someone, someone's like, oh, buy this thing and you can also give to this cause. It's typically a cool, a cool sell point. And so my, we started the nonprofit Feed a Family before we even started Poncho's Blanket. And that, that was the community kitchen slash nonprofit that we have now because my parents are missionaries in Mexico and they still do uh, missions work over there. So it just really was easy to use their infrastructure of volunteers to cook and to give out the meals. And so, yeah, and Poncho's Blanket worked really well for that, to nice. implement that with Feed a Family uh, because a lot, of the, a lot of the proceeds that we make here goes to the community kitchen. Nice. What would you tell um, someone who wants to start a project, wants to uh, engage in, in a new endeavor, a business, but uh, has not done it yet? For new business people, I would have to say they got to know what they want to do. 
identity is will only take you so far in the sense that I just want to have my own business. I just want to be an entrepreneur. Well, okay, well, what kind of business? You know, what do you like to do? What do you want to do? You can't just want to be something and then it happens, right? That's a good start, but that's not going to build you a house. What you need to do is figure out what you want to do. Create a vision for it. Once you have a vision, then you can make a plan. And once you have a plan, you can execute the plan. And when you execute the plan, you need to have grit to keep on executing the plan every single day. Because when, when there's going to be times when you don't want to do it anymore. A hundred percent. There's going to be times you don't want to live anymore. That's how life works, right? And But if you have that grit, then it helps you execute the plan and when the plan is done, then you actually have the, what you envisioned. And you're like God. Because God is the one who like creates something in his mind, speaks it into existence. And that's what we do. We think of something, we speak it, we plan it out, and then we do it. And that you're going to get whatever you want if you can do that. If you can keep on doing that. Right. That's my... What are some of the challenges um, with starting a business with uh, taking the opportunities some of the challenges there's a lot of different challenges and i can't tell you which ones you're going to face like whoever the listener is or you know you you're going to depends on what market you're in you'll face the challenges for sure uh one of the big ones that um i think is important to touch on is the FOMO aspect, the fear of missing out, where you always want to take every opportunity that is available. And the issue with that is you can only spread yourself so thin and there's only a certain amount of opportunities you can take in a lifetime, right? Um, and there's this saying, it says, a, li a once in a lifetime opportunity comes twice a year. In other words, you're in an ocean of infinite opportunities always and so just because you missed that opportunity or that opportunity because they were too far away you weren't ready for that opportunity yet or it just wasn't in your immediate sphere of influence and and that can really boggle you down and drown you in this ocean of opportunities because you feel like you're not getting anything done you're not taking any of the right opportunities and you become your own worst enemy in the sense that the spectator on the outside sees the person with the ocean of opportunities and they're like, you missed that wave over there and that one and there's a swell over there. And you're like, you know, that FOMO, you're drowning, all these opportunities I'm missing out on. When the truth is, the only opportunities you can actually take are the ones that are immediately around you in your actual sphere of influence. With you like, it has to be two or three feet away from you for you to, for that to be a plausible opportunity for you. And so when I say you become your own worst enemy, it's because you start to look at yourself in hindsight, which is 2020 or whatever, but it's also like a wider lens. And you start to look at all the opportunities you missed. And you're like, I'm such an idiot. I didn't take all those opportunities. And you become your own enemy by, by saying like all the opportunities you missed when that person was, isn't there in the boat, in the actual place where this is the present tense is where you can take those opportunities. And in my opinion... Uh, the best opportunities are the most natural ones, the ones that come naturally. It's like if you have to force your way into a door, a lot of times it's not going to work out. You start swimming in that direction towards this big swell. There's going to be this wave. By the time you get there, the wave already happened. It's too late. And then where you were, there's another opportunity. And that's and then you're going to start swimming there. That's why I say like a, a savvy surfer is going to wait or the right wave and it will come i guarantee it but you don't want to try to get them all at once because you'll end up not getting any that's such a great analogy um did you grow up in tlaxcala mm -hmm. did you have any culture shocks between either the american or the mexican culture oh yeah i get culture shock every time i go back to mexico and every time i come back here it's just a small culture shock now because I've done it my whole life. Since I was 10, I was traveling to Mexico and back and forth to the United States. Um, and so there's a bit of culture shock for sure, the way people do things, their sense of humor. Um, every, yeah, so it's, it's a bit of culture shock, but, 
but they have really good food over there, so I get over it pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. So, what are can you think of uh, what are your, some of your favorite uh, positive aspects of the American culture and some of your favorite positive aspects of the Mexican culture? My favorite aspects of the Mexican culture, I'll start out with. Besides the food. Besides the food, it's, I mean, Mexico is a wonderful place. It's beautiful. I love the sense of humor. It's, um, I love their, their, obviously their food, their culture, their colors, the vibrance of it all, right? Um, I'm typically not a very colorful person in the sense of, I don't like to wear colorful things, but when I started this brand, I was like, well, I have to do colorful things because that's part of the culture. It's the heritage. Um, I have family there, you know, uh, I love their, their, uh, everything about Mexico is really great. Obviously there's things that politically aren't great, but in general, it's an awesome place. My family's there. So the United States, I love American culture. So I've always been kind of an outcast, not outcast. I've always been on the other side, each like growing up or whatever, because I grew up in Mexico as the American kid. Because we got there when I was like nine or ten. I didn't know Spanish yet, so I had to, I had to learn Spanish. And they're like, hey, ese che gringo, no sé qué. You know, I was like, I was the gringo. And then when I left Mexico to the Marine Corps, I was in the Marine Corps for a few years, and they would call me Mexican and all these other words that aren't very nice, um, <laughs> you know, in the Marines. And so in the Marine Corps, I was the Mexican, or in the United States, and in Mexico, I was the gringo. So I, I was always, I always felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm of the other side mm -hmm. of things. So, um, yeah, cross-dimensional culturally. Well, um, I am so glad that Kansas City has this, uh, this shop. This is really uh, a culturally enriching. I strongly recommend you come check it out. Uh, Pancho's Blanket at the Bauer Building at the Crossroads. Thank you so much for joining us. Donovan. Yeah, thanks for having me. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.